Well, praise the Lord and greetings in that awesome and wondrous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Lambert W. Gates Sr. and it is my pleasure and distinct honor to welcome you again to another Victory Through Praise telecast. This telecast is brought to you each and every week at this same time uh, via L.W. Gates Ministries uh, in conjunction with Great Apostolic Faith Temple in Detroit, Michigan and the Mount Zion Apostolic Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. We indeed are excited about the great things that the Lord Jesus Christ is doing in and through us. Thank you for allowing us this privilege to join you in your home or perhaps your place of business or wherever you are. We so much appreciate being allowed to share this time with you each and every week. And it is our prayer that we are a blessing. Now, I want you to join us uh, in the lovely sanctuary of the Mount Zion Apostolic Church in Indianapolis with the worship service and message already in progress. There's a verse I'd like to read here in 2 Timothy. It's the third verse. My subject will come right from the verse. 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm sorry. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And I'd like everybody, if you will, to read that verse as we always do together again aloud in unison. And what does it say? Thou therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier, Sister Jewel, a good soldier of who? All right, what does it say again? Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I've been using three words, a good soldier, a good soldier. And that, that uh, is simple enough. The message today is really simple enough. It's challenging you and I to, to simply be a good soldier. I think Paul is something weighing quite heavily in his spirit as he writes these words to someone who, whose training and spiritual rearing he has had a hand in bringing up. These words are not addressed to a stranger, but they're addressed to somebody dear to Paul's heart. Someone who Paul has grown to know and grown to love. Someone Paul evidently feels that God <coughs> has a great call on his life, a great responsibility, a great mandate. We know him by the name of Timothy. This book bears his name. This book bears his name. Book of Timothy. Book of Timothy bears the name to whom uh, these words are addressed. And Timothy here is receiving instruction from Paul. Instruction in, in, in how to conduct his life. If you read this book very carefully and are cognizant of the history of this book, you will immediately sense that there is urgency in the spirit of Paul. An urgency because Paul recognizes that his tenure here on earth is swiftly drawing to an end. He won't be around too much longer. Won't be in the earth too much longer. He is about to, uh, getting, uh, making ready to uh, go through his transition, his transition from, from earth to heaven. He writes uh, later indicating that he, 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 he says, uh, for the time of my departure, remember those words, is at hand. We quote Paul quite often at homegoing services. He says, I fought a good fight. He said, I did what? I kept the faith. And what else? I finished my course. And when you, when you get to that 
uh, stage of mind, it, it means that, that uh, there's some urgency now. K kingdom business must be handled. Whatever I, I'm going to do for the Lord, I got to get it in now. Whatever I'm going to handle, I got to get it in now. Whatever impact I'm going to make, I got to get it in now. And that's what he's doing with Timothy. That's why he's writing the way he's writing. He's in prison. He's facing uh, Nero's chopping block. It won't be long before he goes among the ranks of martyrdom and is martyred with others who have gone on to be with Jesus, sacrificing their life that the gospel of Jesus might be spread around the world. Timothy, you might call him his protege. And with Timothy, uh, we find a person that most everybody can identify with. He is a young man in comparison to Paul. And he has been prepared for this time, been prepared by uh, his mother and his grandmother. We know them by the name of Lois and Eunice. They have had the responsibility of cultivating Timothy up into the man of God that he was. I mentioned this morning that uh, you never hear about Timothy's father. Timothy's father somehow is, <clears throat> is left out of, of, of any uh, passage of scripture that we don't know his name there's no information on him and uh, there are a lot of different thoughts perhaps about him we don't know exactly what the case may be did he die did he abandon his family or uh, was there something else that went on but all we can glean from scripture is, is that Timothy is reared by Lois and Eunice and I said this morning sometime God leaves things out intentionally. Everything about scripture is intentional, even God leaving things out. Because Paul also says that all scripture is given by what? The inspiration of God, which means that his word is valid. His word is infallible. There's no fault in God's word. And so everything that takes place in it is done so with perfection. And what God leaves out, he leaves out so uh, that he can help somebody. And maybe he left off Timothy's father because he wanted you to know that if you don't have anybody that you can call father, God will still take care of you. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? God just, just looked down the line of time and, and saw the disintegration of the family. He saw you know, men getting up and walking away. Men dropping babies off and deciding that I don't know them. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. After I dropped them off. But, but God is so faithful that if you let him, he'll be a father to you. You know, you don't have to be warped. Your life doesn't have to be out of order. If there's not a man to teach you how to be a man, God will teach you how to be a man. If there's not a woman to teach you how to be a woman, God can teach you how to be a woman. I'm, I'm glad that God is God, aren't you? God, God blessed this grandmother. God blessed his mother. Evidently, they were strong women. And thank God for strong women. Amen. Thank God for, for, for women who, who know how to step in and step up. And I know a woman can, can never be a man, but, but if a man is not present, I believe if a woman prays, God can help her do what needs to be done. Somebody shout hallelujah here. Not hallelujah another time. Huh? There were some strong women in my life. I was blessed to have my dad around. My dad uh, uh, steered me, guided me, reared me. But you know, something tells me that if my dad had went on first, my mama still would have handled her business. Amen. She wasn't a man, but she hit like a man. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. She packed a mean punch. And I wasn't just scared of my daddy. I was scared of my mama. And, and there might be some of y'all like me. Every now and then you might have really wanted your father to get you over your mama getting you. 
Sometimes when women get to whipping, you know women got emotional in them anyway, and they, didn't I tell you, I tell you, you know, sometimes, amen, they clicked it all up and, and wear it all out. Let me leave that alone, but, 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 but God uh, is in the plan. God is in the plan. I want to tell anybody in this church today, do not decry your background. Don't, don't feel bad about where you came from. Don't feel bad about your family situation. Honey, God got you covered. He brought you, he brought you the way he brought you for a purpose and for a reason. And it could be that he brought you that way because he wants to use you like Timothy so that you can reach back and help somebody else when they come through a similar situation. Paul, Paul here is dealing with this fine young man. He taught him how to be a pastor. Taught him not only how to be a pastor, but uh, his concern with him is to teach him how to be an overseer of pastors. You might call uh, Timothy like Paul. He's a protege of Paul. And like Paul, uh, they are leaders of pastors. They are trainers of pastors because everybody needs a covering. Titus was a trainer and leader of pastors and so uh, they had this responsibility and Paul now realizes soon I'm going off the scene and so I have a responsibility to deposit what I have in somebody else. You know what we got to be mindful of Every generation should ask God to bless me in such a way that I can leave something to the next generation. Amen. I'm not just talking about money. I'm not just talking about stuff and things because you can leave folk stuff and things, but stuff and things are no good without character. Amen. You need some character. You need uh, uh, some integrity. You need, amen, to, to have uh, uh, the kind of personhood that, that is noble. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. So that, so that others can be blessed. And sometimes we try to substitute character with money. We try to substitute character with stuff and things. But, but, but that will not suffice. We need to pass to the next generation, amen, of understanding of what right and wrong is. Moreover, we ought to pass to them a knowledge of who God is. And sometimes we miss that. Sometimes we miss that. It really, in one sense, shouldn't be that the next generation is worse than the previous generation. If we did this thing right, Every generation ought to be better than the one that came before. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Part of our problem is we got mothers uh, that don't want to be mothers. And we got fathers. Can I talk to us? That don't want to be fathers. You, you can't be, amen, your child's parent and buddy at the same time. You can't. Somebody, somebody talk to me. Amen. Watch it. Watch it. You can be their friend, but you can't be their buddy. And then, and then I'm your mama, I'm your daddy before I'm your friend. Because my primary assignment is to help you to become better than what you are, better than, than what me and, and your other parent has been. And we have to be careful about that because we live in a day and time in which we have parents both naturally and spiritually sometimes that don't understand who they are, don't understand what they are. Amen. The mother is trying to keep up with the daughter. Y'all ain't hearing me. And the father, can I talk to us, is trying to keep up with the son. Both of y'all can't smoke dope at the same time. Both of y'all. Come on. Come on. Come on, help me. Can I preach up in here? Somebody, somebody help me preach and, and tell your neighbor, somebody got to be grown up in here. Everybody, everybody can't be smoking dope. Everybody can't be a, a hoochie mama. Somebody got, somebody got to be the lady. Can I get a witness? You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't help your daughter when your dress is as short as hers. Somebody, somebody got to, somebody got to grow up and, and get some gravity. Everybody say gravity. We, 
got to get some gravity in this thing. But but when you observe life, amen, amen, the whole home is off the chain. The daddy's off the chain. The mama is off the chain. The son and father sitting and drinking and smoking and getting high together. Y'all ain't going to hear me. The mother and the daughter is out at the club together, amen, because you got parents who have never grown up. They 50 and still a child. They 50. I wish I could talk. Somebody, somebody shout hallelujah. Somehow, somehow we got to get this thing corrected and get, amen, our lives back in order. That's what's wrong, amen, with our culture. That's what's wrong with our culture. Y'all listening to me? That's what's wrong. That's what's wrong with us. Everybody trying to stand out on the corner. Everybody uh, still trying to wear tight jeans, dropping down their behind. Everybody still, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying, still trying to be a gangster. Amen. You can't be a gangster at 60 years old. The gangster has left you. You, you got you to gotta stand up. Stand up and, and be a man. Everybody that's next to a man, tell them, stand up and be a man. Tell, tell them, tell them. Fight for your survival. Fight for your sanity. Fight for your mind. Fight for your peace. Fight for your joy. Fight. Fight. Greetings. If you would like to purchase this service or any of our other services, please visit us on our website at www.mtzionchurch.org. Thank you and enjoy the remainder of the service. My children acted out of order. My job was acting crazy. I had a pain in my body and I feel like I'm at my wit's end. I'm ready to give up and throw in the towel. But I need somebody to shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, say, I feel your pain. Say, I feel the hurt in your spirit. Hold on to the hand and talk to him. Say, I feel the tears that are welling up on the inside. Say, but I got a SOS message from heaven today and God told me to tell you after you've done all that you can stand anyhow finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole arm of God give somebody a high five and say I to you the victory if you put on God's armor put on the helmet of salvation put on the breastplate of righteousness shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel lift up the shield of faith cut with the sword of the spirit I just rose to tell my God said, I need some soldiers. God said, I need some fighters. Somebody pick up your dukes and look at your name and say, neighbor, my dukes are balled up. Say, but guess what? They're not balled up for you. That's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to sit up in church and box one another. He wants us to sit up in church and be mad with one another. He wants us to come out on Sunday morning and not speak to one another. But God told me to ask you, do you know who the enemy is? Somebody help me preach and give a neighbor a high five and say, I who the enemy is. We've been spending too much time majoring in the minors, fighting one another. But God said, your enemy is not your brother or sister. God said, your enemy is not your husband. 
Your enemy is not your wife. Your enemy is not your mother and father. Your enemy is not your children. Your enemy is not your co-worker on the job. Your enemy ain't your boss. Your enemy is not your next door neighbor. But I heard the Bible say we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities. Y'all ain't going to talk to me against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in the high places. God told me to tell Mount Zion there's a war going on. It's not in the pew. It's not in your house. It's in the cosmos. It's in the hell. It's in the element. It's in heaven. It's in hell. But he also told me to tell you that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I just rose to tell Mount Zion let's go to the fight. Somebody help me preach. Grab somebody and pull them a little bit. And say come on and go to the fight with me. I don't want to fight it by myself. One can chase a thousand but two can put ten thousand to fight. I'm not going to preach no more until I see some soldiers stand on the floor and put up their dukes. I'm not going to preach no more. Look at your neighbor and say church is over until you agree to fight with me. We're two and three. Touch y'all ain't going to talk to me. Touch and agree. Touch somebody and say agree with me that the, that the bound of the devil will be broken. Agree with me that every chain is going to come off. Agree with me that there'll be victory in my house. Agree with me that my family will come together. Agree with me that the devil will get out of my mind and leave my thoughts alone. Agree with me that God will heal my body. I just rose to call for some soldiers today. I come to tell somebody we got to learn how to fight for one another. Look at your neighbor and then take a blow. Look at your neighbor. Don't wing at them, but swing in the air and say, I just took a swipe for you. I just canceled a demonic assignment that was going down in your life. Take another swipe. Put the devil in check. Yes. Look at your neighbor. Take another swing. Say, that was for your family. That was for your children. That was for your cousin. That was for your mama. I just swung that God would save them. Stand up, child of God. Let's fight for one another. God told me to tell you, we got to stand in the gap. When one of us gets on the attack, when the devil gets one of us and knocks us down, we can't let him get killed. But we got to come together. The saints got to come to the rescue and surround them in prayer. In Jesus' name, shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm going to pray for you until your strength come back. I'm going to pray for you until your anointing come back. I'm going to pray for you until the devil leave your stuff alone. Get up. I'm going to pray till your strength come back. I'm going to pray till you get back on your feet. And then when you get back up, pray for me. We got to do it together. We got to get it together. We got to take the kingdom by force. 
Somebody help me fight. Somebody help me fight. Put up your dukes now. Fight for yourself. Put up your dukes now. Fight for your survival. Fight for your sanity. Fight for your mind. Fight for your peace. Fight for your joy. Fight. Fight. Well, my brothers and sisters and friends, that's all for tonight. I certainly hope that you were blessed by the preaching of the engrafted Word of God. And may we all remember the words of the psalmist, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thank you for allowing us this privilege to share. And we hope that you were so blessed that you will join us next week at this very same time, over this very same station. And until then, I'm Bishop Lambert W. Gates Sr. wishing and praying you the greatest blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless. Shalom.